okay, promise mechanics. Let's go through the mechanics of this kind of mysterious uh, type of uh, protocol. Um, it's mysterious in many different ways. Uh, number one, this is based, it's a derivative based upon a price feed rather than something that is collateralized. Uh, it, is, it is also unusual in that this idea of outperforming the pool of all of the synths. And again, we need to look at the mechanics to understand this. So I got some diagrams, hopefully will be uh, helpful uh, for you. So let's, let's go through uh, a couple of detailed examples here. So let's start, um, we've got three traders and each have $20,000. So the total debt is $60,000. So, um, so one, uh, Trader 1 has got two SBTC, so two Bitcoin cents that are $10,000 each. So that's $20,000 worth. And one holds 100 S ETH, so the synth linked to ETH. And the price is $200 each. So again, that's $20,000. And the third, holds $20,000 of SUSD, which is priced at $1. So that's also $20,000. So every single trader here has got $20,000. And um, the share, their share is 33% uh, percent, uh, each. The total debt in US dollars is $60,000. So again, I've got the assumptions you can see. Um, and you can see the holdings on the far uh, right, uh, two SBTC, um, 100 uh, of the ETH synth and the uh, 20,000 US dollar uh, synth. Okay, so that's kind of where we start. So now, suppose the price of Bitcoin doubles to 20,000 and the price of Ethereum goes up five times from 200 to 1,000. So now let's think of the total debt here. So the total debt becomes higher. So the, the Bitcoin is doubled in value. So it goes from 20,000 to 40,000. The ETH has gone up by a factor of five. So it goes from 20,000 to 100,000 and nothing's happened to the value of the dollar. So you put this together and you get $160,000. So each trader is responsible for one third. And I'll, I'll round a bit, uh, but that means $53,300. And it turns out that only the holder of the synthetic ether is gonna be profitable in this particular uh, situation. So again, think about the Bitcoin holder. Yeah, it's great that Bitcoin is doubled, but Ethereum did much better. So the value of their position is $40,000, but the value of their debt is 53,300. So it's a negative balance of 13,300. The holder of Ethereum has done really well because their Ethereum has gone from 20,000 to 100,000 the obligation is 53,300, and there's a positive balance of 46,700, and the US dollar holder, um, where there's no change in value, they have one third of the debt here, so they've done the worst, because that means that uh, they've gone and now uh, have got this negative balance of 33,300. So you can see that what's really important here is uh, the how you do relative to the pool. So even though Bitcoin did really well, you're going to be a loser on this because Ethereum did better uh, than Bitcoin. So let's go back and take another uh, example. And now what we're going to do is to have the price of Bitcoin falling. Um, the price of Bitcoin falls to $5,000. And let's say the price of ETH also falls to $100.
Okay, so, so basically both Bitcoin and Ethereum have dropped by 50%. And we'll assume the dollar, uh, there's no change for the dollar. So if we go through and figure out uh, what the obligation is now, well, we used to have uh, 20,000 for uh, the Bitcoin, but now it's only 10,000. We used to have 20,000 for the Ethereum, and now it's only 10,000. And then we got 20,000 of US dollars. So uh, the debt is now $40,000. And it turns out that um, when we divide that by three, that's 13,300. And in this particular case, only the US dollar investor is profitable. So you can see that both of the, the holder of the SBTC and the SETH uh, um, are losers here in terms of net balance of negative 3,300. But the US dollar investor has done really well. Uh, so they're uh, up 6,600. So hopefully you can see here what's going on that if you believe the prices are actually going down, there's different ways you can actually uh, implement this. But one way to implement is to actually go in and buy the SUSD. Uh, okay, so uh, notice it profited when uh, the US dollar effectively did better uh, than uh, what happened with the other um, uh, cents uh, here. So uh, this is, um, so uh, Synthetics has got a, a platform uh, decentralized uh, exchange. Um, and there is a way, a mechanism, whereby uh, trading actually happens. And uh, basically, the contracts are enforcing um, so that the users can only redeem uh, their fees if they maintain a sufficient collateralization ratio. So no surprise uh, that collateralization is going to be crucial in this protocol as well as uh, other uh, protocols. So uh, this is, again, uh, a very uh, innovative idea. However, um, this is something that could be extremely volatile. The example that I gave you, uh, you could see what happens uh, in terms of uh, the negative balances. So it turns out that the collateralization ratio currently to mint these cents and participate in the staking rewards uh, is very high. So collateralization currently is 800%. So this is way higher than what we talked about uh, previously. For example, in MakerDAO, we talked about uh, you know, pledging um, Ethereum and borrowing uh, DAI or minting DAI. That was like 150%. This is uh, 800%. So um, it's also the case that some of these SNX uh, tokens are uh, inflationary. So they're also used not just as utility in terms of uh, trading on the platform, but they're also used to reward those that participate. And we've seen this before in DeFi, that you can create incentives by uh, allocating some tokens to those that actually participate. And we talked in detail about how Compound actually does this. Well, uh, many of these DeFi protocols actually do this. So um, you know, basically, uh, this is um, used as a way to get people to add liquidity, to, uh, to actually put up uh, some of these large margins. So it's a way um, to increase activity and the popularity of the, the platform. So it, it's very interesting, again, um, that when this was originally launched, it was pretty narrow, but I've already shown you that they've expanded into different assets uh, like you know, stocks and stock indices. And, and who knows where this actually ends? 
Um, there will be options. And uh, again, this idea of using the price feed uh, is, uh, in my opinion, a, a very powerful idea. So um, back to our uh, solution and problem sheet. So we can create a synthetic asset that, that can track any real world asset. That's a, like a powerful idea. So you've effectively tokenized. Um, all you need is a reliable uh, price feed. And it doesn't even need to be traded. You just need a, a, like a feed of data. Uh, anyone can access, um, and uh, this is something that um, is efficient in terms of uh, all you need is the price feed. You don't need a trading floor or anything uh, like that. And effectively, because you're uh, backed by the price feed, there's no slippage, which again is unique. So, of course, as all of these protocols, um, the synthetics uh, protocol is interoperable with others, as we will see a little later on. And the fourth course in particular will go through some examples where we go from protocol to protocol.